Hi, everybody. Welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty at Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois. And this year, in our second season, we're doing something different. We're partnering with the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas, to bring you these podcasts. My name is David Capes, and I am the Senior Research Fellow with the Lanier Library. Our purpose in these podcasts is fairly simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, so we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it, but also to live it. Joining me today is Dr. Gene Green, who is Professor Emeritus in New Testament at Wheaton College, my former colleague up there. Gene, great to see you. He's also great now you, David. the Dean of Trinity International University in Florida, which is down there in, near the Everglades. Just five minutes away. Wow. Uh, I've got the uh, alligators and the pythons out there and the <laughs> water moccasins and lizards out in back of our house. It's a great place in the palm trees. And let me tell you, David, unlike Chicago, there's no snow. No we're snow. Oh, yeah. Listen. No snow. No, no 25 snow. below uh, this, Nothing this like winter. That. Yeah. Nothing like that. We're loving it. Yeah. You, loving you'd it. be lucky to break 50 uh, degrees someday. <laughs> there. Hey, anyway, thanks for being with us today. You, know, you, you have done a, a great deal of work in hermeneutics. You've done a great deal of work in what's called relevance theory. People know you for that. So let's talk a little bit about relevance theory today, what it is, and let's give an example or so. What's your, what's your okay. story about that? Well, the, my entrance into relevance theory started in Costa Rica. I'm a cyclist, and early in the morning at, at dawn, a friend of mine, Dr. Ron Ross, our neighbor, who is a translation consultant for the United Bible Societies, a linguist from the University of Colorado, he and I would go out cycling at the crack of dawn, and uh, naturally we would talk about Bible translation and linguistics. And at the time, I was somebody that was working in Spanish, and I was always fascinated by the fact that I, I knew Spanish well. I had a increased my vocabulary. I knew the grammar well. I could manage it well. But I found myself over and over again in situations where I could pick out when somebody's speaking to me in Costa Rica, I could pick out every word. And I knew what it meant. I could pick out. I, I knew the grammar, but still didn't understand what they were saying. Mm. There was a distance, a gap between what was said and what was meant by what was said. Hmm. In relevance theory terms, there is a gap between sentence meaning and utterance meaning. So relevance theory talks a lot about that, how that communication is not simply a matter of encoding into the sign system, the, the language, uh, using the lexemes, the words, and the grammatical forms. It's not a matter simply of encoding and decoding, but relevancy wants to say that that the semantic structures just give evidence, nothing more than evidence, of a speaker or writer's informative intent. So there's this hmm. high degree of inference that happens in uh, all of our communication. In fact, relevancy wants to point us to the idea that uh, communication is fundamentally inferential. So there's a gap that we have to fill. If you've ever been to London, you know, you go to the underground in the tube <laughs> and you hear mine the gap and you see the t-shirts with the mine the gap on them. Yeah, and you do yeah. have to mine the gap. There's a gap between what is said and what is meant by what is said. And so uh, communication is not simply a matter of encoding and decoding the sign system, but using the sign system, the, the language, the mm -hmm. stuff written down on the page or spoken as evidence of what somebody means. So if I say something like, he went to the store. Now, you can understand what that, mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. grammar and those words. But think about what it means if we want to bring this up to full propositional form, if we want to understand what is meant. He, am I talking about Joe or Jim? He went. Did he ride a bike or go in the car or walk or run? Went mm. to the store. Which store? Mm. Um, and, and to do what? You know, to buy hamburgers or to get a new suit. <laughs> so you have to do reference assignment. 
George M. Right. You have to disambiguate. How did a person go? It's sort of like going to the dictionary and seeing all the, the definitions of went or go. Right. And then we have to do enrichment. So we have to add so much. So how does all that happen? And how are we able to fill in the gap between what is said and what is meant? Now, what happens hmm. to us, you know, in real time right. as we're talking or communicating also happens when we take a look at Scripture. There's so, a gap between what is said and what's meant. So is that same gap there when you're reading in a, in a translation? Or has oh, yeah. that work already been done? Uh, no, it's what happens in something like a, like a paraphrase, the New Living Translation and mm -hmm. others, is that you try to fill the gap mm -hmm. because an understanding is that we, the, just translating literally or a modified literal translation a, a functional equivalent translation will not allow you to put in there all the or understand all the inferences that are that are made right, right. so but there, there's that's why we write commentaries david <laughs> this is why we write commentaries because yes. translation is the hardest work on the block it there's is. nothing harder than translating because you really you really can't Put it all in there, even in the most uh, robust paraphrase. You I've, can't put it all in. I remember thinking when I first started reading Greek years ago, learning Greek, that it was kind of like having a magic decoder ring. Remember those? Yeah. But, yeah you know, exactly. if, if if I could just get the right word from the dictionary and plug it in for that particular word, aelthon, he would, you know, they went. Mm -hmm. to right. I, if I then I that would just solve the problem. But in fact, that's just the beginning, isn't it? I mean that's exactly. I mean that's that, exactly. that's an important step, but there's no decoder ring for this. You've got to right. really do that second level of study. Right. You know, I was thinking about take a simple example like John, uh, fifteen fifteen, okay. and uh, where Jesus said, "I don't call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. I've called you friends." because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. That's a really curious statement, hmm. how he goes from, I don't call you servants, and you and I know that the word here right, is right. doulos, doulos, slave. Right. And then he it talks about the slave not knowing what the master, the kurias, hmm. is doing. So all of a sudden we're in this frame right now yeah. of of the ancient institution of slavery right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay that's the frame but then he does this almost radical shift yeah about into friends friends i don't call you slaves anymore but friends yeah now what we try to fill the gap by trying to understand what a friend is and if i ask somebody what is a friend well, it's somebody you got to have ice cream with, got dinner for with, hang out with, mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody that you might share your confidences with. But what kind of information was accessible to John yeah. and his readers at that time? And you and I know that friend, one of the frames that we find it in is within ancient patron-client relationships. Yeah, exactly. And when a slave was manumitted, he wasn't just free, but became a client hmm. of their former master. And those clients, if you think about uh, a juvenile, it's a little book, how clients are entertained. Those clients were often called friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the gap. Yeah. Here's the gap. And we're always going to try to fill that gap by salient information, accessible information, but the problem in reading scripture is that here we have documents that were written thousands of years ago in another yeah. culture, another time. And we try to fill that that gap between what is said and what is meant with accessible information to us rather than asking what was accessible, what was salient to them. Mm. So relevance theory talks about this whole process. Every one of us knows that context is important. Right. We know Scott Hafeman, you know, great uh, friend and yeah. New Testament scholar. 
And I remember Scott, when we were at Wheaton, he would, he would always say, context is king. And I go, amen, that's right, <laughs> context is king. But we, you and I, and most of our, our sisters and brothers that have been trained in exegesis have never stopped to figure out linguistically how the context relates to the sign system. Mm-hmm. And what relevance theory does, it, it doesn't give us a magic formula for interpretation, exactly. right, right. but gives us a framework to understand why it is that we're using so the context. If somebody wanted to know more about context theory, how would, how would they do that? Where would, where would they go for that? Well, for relevance theory, yeah, there's sorry. a wonderful... Yeah, for relevance theory. Yeah. <laughs> Context theory. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Con- that's fine. Yeah, that's no. fine. That'll work. That'll yeah, no. Work. But, but um, relevance uh, theory. You know, if the master bibliography is put together by a guy by the name of Francisco Use, Y-U-S, mm. and if you just Google Francisco Use relevance theory, you will get the mother load of, of all the literature that is out there on this theory, including the stuff that deals with biblical interpretation. Right. When you take a look at that list, you're going to find some familiar names for biblical studies and in translation. I think about Joe Fanton is mm. in there from, from Dallas, or Steve Patamore, who worked with the United Bible Society, uh, also uh, Christoph Unger. Uh, Margaret Sim, and these were Margaret uh, worked with uh, Summer Institutes of Linguistics. Mm-hmm. Think about John Hilber, great Old Testament scholar. Uh, another uh, a translator, uh, Harriet Hill, translator Ernst August Goot, the late Regina Blass, Jean Green. <laughs> Jean Green, I started <laughs> to say, Jean yeah. Green, yeah, Jean Green. I mean, people you know, know yeah. I said, I want to talk about relevance theory on a, exegetically speaking. They said, you got to talk to Jean Green. Jean, thanks for being <laughs> with us today here. Oh, joy to be with you. Yeah, thanks. More about that later. We're going to come back and talk about this. Thanks as well to Silvio Vasquez, Rebecca Larson, and Krista Sanchez for helping us edit and produce this podcast. If you want to study biblical languages, then maybe the best place that you can go is Wheaton College. They have, they have a tremendous program, whether you want to be a graduate or an undergraduate student. So go to the website, www.wheaton.edu. Look for Modern and Classical Languages and get started today. If you have questions about this podcast, we'd like to hear from you as well. Contact us at exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.